What's up everybody, Nate here. So I'm doing a little bit of a different video today. Quite recently, I've been able to organize my gear. This room has been dedicated to me, uh, which is just fantastic. And yeah, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to show you how I plan on storing my gear, but I also thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to show you like what I have for gear and what I have to choose from when I go hiking and backpacking. So with that being said, we'll just start with packs, which are right behind me here. And first up, we have the Osprey Duro 15. So this is a day pack. I use this for my extended trips, long day hikes, things like that. Has a lot of storage on the shoulder straps. This is like a running vest style pack, two and a half liter bladder in this, but this has about 300 miles on it so far. Love this pack. After that, we got the Gossamer Gear Murmur 36 liter pack. I picked this up used. Um, this pack is ultra light, super light, around 10 and a half ounces, give or take. And yeah, it's not really the pack for me though, I've come to realize, unfortunately. And in all fairness, Gossamer Gear even says, you know, if you don't think this is the pack for you, it probably isn't. And gosh darn it, they were pretty right about that. But yeah, the uh, Gossamer Gear Murmur 36 liter pack. And you might see a little theme going on here. Gossamer Gear, um, this is the Kumo 36 liter pack. This is my favorite ultralight pack. Super comfortable, it has thick shoulder straps shoulder strap pockets on it as well, hip belt pockets. Uh, yeah, this is a fantastic pack. I've been using this for a few years now and it's my go-to ultralight pack. After that, we have another Gossamer Gear pack. Picked this one up used. Uh, this is the Vagabond. I don't know how many liters, but I use this sometimes for day trips, but more or less I use this for traveling. So if I'm traveling, flying, anything like that, this is my go-to pack that I always reach for and shoulder strap pockets on that as well. And then let's see, over here we have, this is the Exos. So the Osprey Exos 38 liter pack, picked this up used uh, about six months ago. This is quickly becoming my favorite pack out of all packs. <laughs> super, super comfortable. All kinds of storage on the shoulder straps and hip belts. Um, isn't too heavy as well. It's only about two pounds. So great pack and I got it at a super good price. And then I have another Osprey pack here. This is the Osprey Exos 48 liter. So another Osprey Exos pack. This has a lot of sentimental value to me. I hiked the long trail in this pack. I've had it for many, many years. I've just been using this for a very long time. So uh, it's durable. It doesn't really have much wear and tear on it considering this has hundreds and hundreds of miles on it. Perhaps even more. And then after that, I have um, the beast. <laughs> So pick this up, used not too long ago. This is the EMS uh, external frame pack. So this thing is just a monster, super heavy. And yeah, I got it for 35 bucks because the guy who had it just couldn't sell it. And I said, you know, if you want to sell it to me at an affordable price, I will pick it up from you. And I had a conversation with him, really nice guy. I do plan on backpacking with this because I don't know, I'm just interested in seeing how this feels. You know, this was pretty common back in the day, but yeah, you want to talk about a heavy pack, holy crap. Now let's go ahead and transition into this cabinet up here. So this is where I keep a lot of my shelters, uh, sleeping stuff. So we'll just dive right on in. So first up is the Uber Bivy by Miles Gear. Um, this is a great shelter. Uh, it's a very polarizing shelter. People either love it or hate it. Uh, it's made of Tyvek. I love this thing. It's a super duper spacious bivy. Uh, it's great for winter hiking and backpacking. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using it for. So the Uber Bivy by Miles Gear, 285 bucks, which considering you can use this in the winter time is way more affordable than a four season tent, which are like four, six, sometimes $800 and up. So Uber Bivy, check it out. Uh, next up is my Hennessy Hammock. So this is one of the first shelters I ever bought when I first started hiking and backpacking. I just thought it was so cool that you could use a hammock to go backpacking instead of like a tent. Had never really heard of that before. So I picked it up and I've spent many, many nights in this hammock, but yeah, I just don't really hammock camp anymore. It's not my style. It's not really my thing, but hold on to it, you know, just in case. And then let's see, we have the, just whip myself in the face there. Uh, the REI Flash Air 2. Um, this is a trekking pole tent, two person trekking pole tent, pretty light, just around two pounds, give or take. Bought this to uh, hike the long trail with, and this is a great tent. It's a single wall tent. So a little bit of condensation issues, but that's the case for all single wall tents, basically. Uh, but yeah, it's affordable, it's durable, it's a great, great tent. And then, so this tent here, this is the Lanshan one-person trekking pole tent. And funny story about this. So 
when I first started trying to go ultralight, was, this was the first tent I kind of got. And back in the day, no one really knew about this tent. And I was really surprised. I found it on Amazon. And about three months after I picked up this tent, Darwin on the trail did a review on this and it just kind of blew up in popularity. So yeah, I've had this for a long time. This is a great, great little tent. And then we have my current shelter, which is a Z-Pack 7x9 flat tarp. So this flat tarp, um, about seven ounces. It's a great little com compact shelter. You know, I've been tarping since 2021. And I think I'm over tarping at this point. Um, I probably will transition back into tents. But yeah, this is a fantastic shelter. I got this used, by the way. And then I have another hammock here. This is the Eno Double Nest. It still has the tags on it. Someone gave this to me. A good friend gave this to me. She really wasn't using it. Um, I probably will never use it for backpacking, but I'll use it for car camping, which I do have a trip coming up here in a few weeks. So I'll bring this with me and set it up just so we have a place to kind of lounge around and hang out. And then this tent here. So you probably have never heard of this company. Unfortunately, they went out of business a number of years ago. Uh, the Max Miles two-person freestanding tent. Um, this is a great tent and I wish they were still around. If so, I'd do probably a pretty thorough review about this, but can't really get this tent anymore. Uh, it's a, right around three pounds, so not too bad. And yeah, it's a good freestanding tent. And this thing, <laughs> this was the first backpacking tent I ever picked up. This is the Grand Mesa 2 by Kelty. Um, this is really heavy, like four and a half pounds, I think maybe even a little more. Um, yeah, it's just too much. It's too big for backpacking basically, you know? So I'll use this again for just regular car camping. But yeah, the Grand Mesa 2. And that pretty much does it for shelters, guys. So we'll transition kind of upwards in this cabinet in the middle here. Um, I just have a lot of closed cell foam stuff, you know, butt pads and things like that. I have several of those. My 1 8 inch foam pad is right up here as well. So I got that ready to go. Uh, but at the top here are all my sleeping pads. So we can go over that stuff real quick. Uh, first up is the Gear Doctors by, oh, this is the Apollo Air, Air by Gear Doctors. So. This I bought several years ago. I was trying out just different pads just to see if I could find something that was affordable, that worked. And you know how that goes, <laughs> never well. And yeah, this is just too narrow of a pad for me. Pretty affordable, around a hundred bucks. It actually has a pretty high R value. So I lend this out in the winter time. I have a buddy I go winter backpacking with and I usually let him use this. So this actually still gets a fair amount of use. And then let's see, speaking of gear doctors, this is my gear doctors pillow. So I use this constantly. This is my go-to pillow. Uh, it's just inflatable, has straps, so it'll attach to your sleeping pad. But yeah, gear doctors pillow. It's actually a pretty good pillow. And speaking of pillows, this is uh, the Dan Becker special, I call it. So this is the uh, Thermarest collapsible pillow, I think it's called. I can't really remember, but yeah, this thing is super, super comfortable. It's definitely the most comfortable pillow I've ever backpacked with. Uh, it's the compressible pillow, that's what they call it. So it actually has foam on the inside and I tell you what, man, if you wanna go bougie, this is the pillow that you want. It's just a little heavy, it's a little bulky, so I don't bring it that often, but every once in a while I'll throw it in my pack. And let's see, another sleeping pad here. This is the Thermarest Neo Air X Thermax. This is my favorite sleeping pad. This is a great winter pad. R value of 6.9, I believe. This is the extra long and extra wide version, so I can really spread out. And yeah, I think it's a rather comfortable pad. And I actually, I sometimes do bring it in the summertime as well. And another pretty popular sleeping pad is the Nemo Tensor. So this is the Nemo Tensor, Tensor regular wide pad. Uh, I got this about a year ago. And this is a great pad, it has a pretty decent R value. And I usually bring this in the three seasons. So spring, summer, fall. I have tried this in the winter time and honestly, it just didn't really cut it for me up in New Hampshire. So I won't really use this in the winter, but for all other seasons, the Nemo Tensor, it's a great pad. This is the Sleep and Go. This is a very, very cheap pad. I picked it up just to see if it would be comfortable and it really isn't. Uh, your hips dig into the ground but it's super light, I think around like 13 ounces, something like that. But yeah, it just doesn't really do it for me. And then this is the Climate Static V2 sleeping pad. So this is what I actually hiked the long trail with. I cannot recommend this pad by any means. I got awful sleep on the long trail. Um, it's wide, which is good, which is one of the reasons I bought it. And uh, it's affordable again, which is another reason why I got it. But yeah, I can't recommend this pad. This is just not a comfortable pad. 
And then up here, I also have my Helinox Chair Zero. So another piece of polarizing gear here. Um, bought this used, and to be honest, I really haven't used it that often once so far. I took it on a trip, set it up, and sat in it maybe five minutes, and that was it. But yeah, I just don't find myself needing a chair. I don't really get chair envy because I don't backpack with anybody who uses chairs. So yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. So down here, right over here, this is where I keep uh, a lot of my kitchen stuff, you know, cooking stuff, stoves and things like that. So I have the Sea to Summit, just coffee mug. I uh, don't really get much use out of this anymore, but I still got it ready to go just in case. I got my cold soaking jar by, I think it's Mountain Smith or Mountain Light or something. I can't really remember, but this is purposefully made for backpacking. It's purposely made for cold soaking and you can actually put boiling water in here as well. Um, it's obviously leak proof um, and it's really easy to clean. They designed it so it's really easy to clean as compared to like a Talenti jar. And then I do have a couple of pots here. I have a 450 Tox pot and a 550 Tox pot. Um, pretty much the same size there, but yeah, if I want to go ultra light, I'll bring the 450 or if I want to be bougie, I'll bring the 550. Not that there's a big difference in, in weight between them. And then down here, I have all of my stoves in here and this is a plug for my wife. So she actually designed this bag. Well, the design on this bag, uh, she's an artist. She does a lot of crafting. Uh, it's a side business that she has. So yeah, I just really like the, the painting. I decided to get it thrown on a sack. So we'll open this up and see, I have my fuel tabs for my Esbit stove, which I'll show you right now. So my lightest stove I have is the Esbit fuel tab stove here. So just several grams this stove weighs. It's fantastic. I've used this a ton in the past. I don't really cook much anymore. I do a lot of cold, cold soaking. So yeah, I haven't gotten much use out of it since, but and then we have the BRS. Uh, this is a one ounce stove. This thing is just, you know, the, the the standard for ultralight hiking and backpacking. A lot of people love this stove, I do too. It's not the most efficient stove you'll find, but you just can't beat the size and the weight. Look at this thing. And then let's see, I just have some extra fuel right there, ready to go. And this little section here, I got this box, open that up, and that's where I just keep all of my coffees, my electrolytes, things like that, just ready to go. Right over here, this is where I keep my extra steaks. So I got some steaks, I got my trowel as well. And then again, just, just more steaks. And then in this last compartment here, this is where I keep all of my maps. So every once in a while I will bring a map or at least a section of the map. <laughs> you don't really need maps in my opinion much anymore. Um, but if I do bring a map, I actually tend to just cut out the section that I need and just leave the rest at home. But back in the day before hiking apps were around, before smartphones were around, this is how we navigated on trail. And that pretty much does it other than I guess I will say that I have some pack covers tucked away right here. So I have this pack cover by Osprey. And then just to show you like how hiking, how far hiking and backpacking water filters have come. So this is the Catadyne uh, just pump filter basically. So when I first started backpacking, this was pretty common. You know, whip that over and you take off these caps and you're basically ready to pump and filter your water. Um, the claim to fame to this filter was that you could hike the entire Appalachian Trail without having to back flush it or anything like that. And I do know somebody who actually did hike the entire Appalachian Trail with one of these back in the day and he backed that up. He said he didn't have to do anything to it. And then, so down here, we'll kind of scoot down here a little bit. This is where I keep a lot of my clothes. So all of my down stuff is in this top drawer here. So I have like my down pants. These are my down pants by Nature Hike. I don't use those too often, but I do have them. I got this down vest just from like Goodwill. Um, it's super light. And yeah, if I need an extra layer, that's a good layer to have. And then I also have the Ghost Whisperer here by Mountain Hardware or a Metatherm. I don't know which one, but super light. I think only around seven ounces, something like that. And this middle drawer, this is where I keep some of my mid layers. Um, most of my other layers I actually keep with my regular clothes because I use those quite a bit. But right here we have the Mountain Hardware. Um, this is the Airmish hoodie. I love this layer. This has a hood on it. This is super light, like right around four and a half ounces. This works great as a mid layer or actually in the winter time, it works great as a base layer too. So I actually have two of those. I have a hooded version and then right here I have just the regular quarter zip version or half zip basically. The zip goes way down. 
But again, these are great layers. If you have a chance to pick these up, go ahead. I got both of these used, by the way. And then this jacket's kind of new to me. This is the Outdoor Vitals Vario jacket. So this is a synthetic jacket, um, pretty lightweight, around 10 ounces, has an awesome hood. The materials are soft. I love this jacket. I can't wait to get more use out of this. And I love the fact that it has great ventilation around the pits, which I'm a sweaty guy, so I appreciate that. And then over here, I have my rain layers. So this is my frog togs. Everybody has to own a frog togs. If you don't have frog togs and you're a backpacker, what are you even doing? And then I have an REI rain jacket here that I picked up for about 16 bucks. So I just couldn't pass it up. I really haven't used it yet at this point, but just got it, you know, a few months ago. And then my Tired and True Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. Been using this for several years. Um, not my favorite rain jacket. It doesn't vent very well. It doesn't have any pit zips, but it gets the job done. And then at the very bottom down here, this is my Mountain Hardware Phantom Down Parka, actually. So this is a beast of a layer. If you want to stay warm in the wintertime, this is the layer that you want to bring. This thing is just absolutely fantastic. I love, absolutely love this jacket. And that pretty much does it for my layers. Um, if you want to pop over here, I'll show you my sleeping bag. So I've got all my bags ready to go right over here. And we'll start off with uh, the Thermarest Vesper 20 degree down quilt. I did a review on this recently. This isn't my favorite quilt. It has a lot of cold spots. The baffling system's a little goofy on this, but you know, some people swear by this quilt. And I don't know, it's just not really the quilt for me. And then we have something that's kind of new for me. So this is, this is pretty cool. So this is a synth synthetic quilt by Mountain Laurel Designs. And I decided to get this because no one's really talking about synthetic quilts. And Mountain Laurel Designs makes nothing but synthetic quilts. And yeah, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to try something new. I've only spent one night in this thing, but excited to use it. It lofts up incredibly well. It has absolutely no stitching in it, as far as the seams are concerned. And the only thing is it just doesn't pack up very well. And then here we have, this is La Fluma, La Fuma down bag. This is a 40 degree bag. This is pretty lightweight. This is what I used to hike the long trail in. Kept me plenty warm. And it is the lightest uh, option that I actually do have right now. And then we have this Horizon Hound blanket here. So this is a down blanket that oh, weighs about a pound. I use this in the winter if I need just like additional warmth. And yeah, it really wasn't that, that expensive. So it's a good option if you need to add some warmth. You know, everybody does like sleeping bag liners. Keeps you way warmer than a, than a liner would. And then the first bag I ever got was the Lamina 20 degree synthetic bag here. This bag's really cool because um, it has welded seams. So it has absolutely no stitching in the seams. The seams are just heat welded basically. So yeah, it does a great job retaining warmth. And I actually plan on using this a lot more in the winter time. It deserves use. This is a great bag. And then over here, this is where I store a lot of my just miscellaneous stuff over here. So this back compartment, I have extra cordage, and this is where I keep all my straps and all that. I've got my bug net here. Right over here, I keep my medicine and emergency pouch. Um, right in the middle, I have just my bug repellents. And then to the right here, this is where I keep all of my um, chapsticks and soaps. In this first drawer, this is where I have all of my electronics, my battery banks here. Um, I have my my charging cables, um, I have my Spot Gen 3 satellite communicator, my Flextail Tiny Pump X, just everything electronic goes in that drawer. And down here in this bottom drawer here, I have all my water storage stuff. So I have a couple of platypus, um, one liter bags here, a um, bunch of caps, sport caps. Uh, in the middle here, I have all of my different lights and headlamps and all that stuff, which I just have a ton of. Uh, my favorite right now is a Nightcore NU25UL. That's a great little headlamp. And then to the right, this is where I keep all of my water filters. So I have like my Catadyne B Free. Uh, I have my Sawyer. I even have some like emergency tablets uh, to purify water in case my water filters fail. So this isn't a comprehensive list of everything I have, but it just gives you a general idea. So anyways, thanks for watching. This is Nate Hikes. You have yourself a wonderful day.